grade 12s, in this video we'll be focusing on naming alkanes and we'll be looking at more difficult examples. If you've missed the previous videos where I go over the basics of naming alkanes and a few easier examples, I need you to stop right now and watch those videos first. Look at the links in the description box. As a reminder, when you name the parent chain or the longest chain, it's very, very important. If there are one carbons, the parent chain will be methane, two carbons, ethane, and so on. You can read this list. Then you need to look out for branches or substituents. If your branches contain carbon and hydrogen, we call them alkyl groups. As you know, if there's one carbon in the branch, it's called a methyl branch, two carbons in the branch, it's an ethyl branch, and so on. And here are all my rules when it comes to naming. Now, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with having a list of rules. In fact, I like having a list of rules, something to follow. But these rules can be very, very confusing unless you're doing actual examples. So I'll put the rules on the screen, but we're going to focus on going through the rules and understanding the rules with examples. Let's do some difficult ones. Our first example is not a very difficult example at all. The reason I've put it here is because I like to throw in examples with condensed structural formulae. Now, remember, there's different ways we can represent organic compounds. This is called a condensed structural formula. It's not showing the bonds or the bond lines. When you get something like this in your exam, now we've only discussed alkanes up to this point in my playlist. However, by the time you write your tests or exams, you would have done alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, all the different homologous series. And looking at this, when you do all of them, it might not be very obvious if this is an alkane or an alkene because it's condensed. You can always draw it out to check. However, you will become accustomed to knowing that if there's a CH3 on the end, a CH3 on the end, and the C's in the middle are bonded to two hydrogens, then it is an alkane. This is essentially what your alkane looks like if I were to ask you to draw the structural formula of this alkane. And now we can easily see it's got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, although you could easily see it over here as well if you count the carbons. So therefore you know that this alkane is called hexane. If I were to give you this and ask you to name it, you should immediately see that it is not an alkane. Because can you see here CH3, CH3, but here I've got a CH and a CH, not a CH2. If you had to draw it out, you would actually see that it is an alkene with a double bond. So not an alkane, we'll name this in a separate video. Now, when naming alkanes, your first step is you have to look for the longest continuous carbon chain or the parent chain. That means carbon attached to carbon attached to carbon. And a lot of people think that it is the first chain that you see that runs horizontally. You know, the straight one that goes across the page like that. Not necessarily. The longest continuous chain can bend, it can curve. As long as a carbon is attached to a carbon, it is part of the chain, the parent chain. So I'm gonna give you a second. I want you to try all of these yourself first, then unpause me and do it. Okay, so I hope you pause me because if you thought that this was the longest continuous chain, let's check if we're correct. How many carbons over here? So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Is there a longer chain? Let's see. What if I had to do this? What about this over here? And you could say, but ma'am, that's a branch. Is it a branch or could it be part of the longest chain? Let's start here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is actually the longest continuous chain. Okay, it's tricky. How do you know when it's a continuous chain? Carbon attached to carbon, attached to carbon, attached to carbon, and so on. What that means is once you've highlighted your longest chain, everything that is not highlighted is a branch, a substituent. In this case, it is a CH3, it is an alkyl group, and in particular, it is a methyl or a methyl group. How do you know it's a methyl group? Because it's got one carbon in the branch. So how do we name? Remember, as we did in previous videos, you need to number the carbon chain to make this methyl group have the lowest possible number. So we could number the carbon chain like this. This could be carbon one, two, three, four, 
five, six. However, if you notice, if you num number the carbon chain the other way, so I started up here and I went down. If I started the other way, like this, this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. That way of numbering is correct because it makes the methyl group be on the lowest possible carbon, carbon number three. So remember when we name, we first start by naming the substituents. So three methyl or methyl, however you want to pronounce it. And then how many carbons in the longest chain? Six and it's alkane. So hexane. Remember when we name, the end of the name is always the homologous series or the family. So it ends in ane. Then in the middle is the number of carbon atoms in the main chain. So we add hex. And then in front of that, the prefix, what comes in front, are the branches, the substituents. In this case, it was a methyl group. Remember, this part is one word. And over here, we are indicating that the methyl group is on carbon three. Numbers and letters are always separated by a dash or a hyphen like that. Okay, example number three is an interesting one. And if you ever see something like this, brackets, it can mean one of two things. Either it is indicating a branch, okay? Or they are using it to help condense a long alkane. And I actually need you to understand the difference between these two. In this case, they are condensing a long chain. In this case, it actually represents a branch. The easiest way to know when it's doing condensing a long chain or a branch, this is a branch, is by drawing it out, unfortunately. But there are also other hints that I'll show you now that will help you determine which one it is. If I have to draw this out, what this is telling me is that there's a carbon with three hydrogens attached, like that. Okay, so that's like that. Then what this is telling me is I've got a carbon with two hydrogens attached. So like this, a carbon with two hydrogens attached, but there's three of them. So I've just drawn one of them. This was me drawing one of them. This is me drawing the second one. And then this is me drawing the third one. I hope you know what I mean. So I'm basically drawing this CH2, but I'm drawing it three times. One, two, three. And then I draw another CH3 at the end. So in this case, you can see you've got a CH2 in brackets. That's when I'm condensing a chain. So they like to do this if you have a really, really long chain and they don't feel like writing out CH2, 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 CH2. I hope that makes sense. This one, on the other hand, is a branch. And now let's do that because it's our next example. How do I know that it's a branch? Well, if I have to draw it out, CH3 will look like this. Then we've got a C and an H. Okay, so a C and a H. It doesn't matter if you draw the H at the top or at the bottom. Then this is telling me that whatever is in brackets is a branch on whatever comes before it. So this thing in brackets, CH3, is a branch. It branches off of this carbon. So it works like this. CH3. I hope you can see it. I'm drawing one carbon and one, two, three hydrogens. So essentially this is this. Okay. And then we've got another CH3. Carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, hydrogen. So this is now essentially the molecule that we are going to be naming. It makes more sense, or for me at least, it's more helpful to name it when you see it in this format. Now remember, this is actually an easy one now. What made it difficult was when they gave it to me in a condensed structural formula version. Now that I've drawn it out as a structural formula, it's actually very easy. Here's the longest chain. That means that this is a branch. How many carbons in the longest chain? Three. So... My name is going to end in ane because it's an alkane and it's going to be prop. Why prop? Because three is prop. So our name is going to end in propane like that over there. But in front of it, over here, needs to come the branches. Now we can number this carbon chain from left to right or right to left. One, two, three or one, two, three. Either way, the methyl group is on carbon number two. Remember, it's a methyl group because there's one carbon 
in the branch, in the substituents. So it is going to be 2 methyl propane. Remember, this is actually one word. This example may be tricky if you do not look properly. This is a condensed little version over here, and so is this. So you don't have to draw it out, but essentially what is happening is as follows. I haven't finished draw drawing because I wanted to show you at quick glance, because this might throw you off over here, it might look like the longest chain is three carbons. However, you can see that I've drawn the carbon with the three H's, this carbon in the middle with the two H's, then this carbon over here has a carbon attached at the top with three H's around it, a carbon at the bottom over here with three H's around it, and then finally another carbon at the end also with three H's around it. So now, seeing it in this format might make it easier to name the chain. However, if you're awake, you could clearly see longest continuous chain, carbon, 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 carbon. So that means that this is a branch and this is a branch. You can see it here as well in its structural formula version. Longest chain, this is a branch and this is a branch. So in our longest chain, we have four carbons. So our name is going to end in butane. Okay, but is four. Then, remember you need to number your main chain so that your substituents, your branches, have the lowest possible number. So it doesn't make sense to number it from left to right like I did over there. Because then my, carbon, my methyl groups will be on carbon three. It makes a lot more sense to number it from right to left, carbon one, two, three, four. In this case, both of my methyl groups are on carbon two. Now remember how it works. If you have two methyl groups or methyl groups or whatever, this is a methyl or a methyl because it's got one carbon in that branch. This is a methyl or a methyl because it's got one carbon in that branch. I have two of them in this molecule. So you have to say dimethyl. Then you have to tell me on which carbon the methyl group falls. So this one's on carbon two and this one's on carbon two. So it's two comma two dimethylbutane. Just remember, 2 comma 2. I know it sounds silly because you're like, okay, but ma'am, I'm already saying di. So I'm already telling you that there's two methyl groups. So why must I say 2 comma 2? It's just how we do the IUPAC name, the IUPAC name, which is the naming convention that we use, the rules that we use. And the rules say, you have to tell me on which carbons the methyl group falls. So this one at the top is on carbon number two. This one over here is on carbon number two. Remember, between numbers and numbers, we have a comma. Very, very important. If you'd like to do some more difficult alkane naming with me, click the link in the description box below for part two. I hope you're learning nicely with me. I can't wait to do the rest of organic chemistry with you. So remember to subscribe if you haven't yet. See you in the next video right now, everybody.